I want you to imagine we are inside a deep cave. Prisoners from the day we are born. Our bodies cannot move. I cannot see what is happening around the cave. My head is only looking straight, fixed in one position, facing the wall of the cave. I'm incapable to move. I hear only some noises, but I cannot turn behind. Gray and black, it's the only colors that I see. The people on the back carrying models of wood and stone, of trees, animals, people, figures. Now what you see in front of you? This is a shadow of an eagle. Look, a shadow of a horse and a shadow of a, of a tree, all gray. Somebody is coming to get me. He drags me to the exit and slowly, slowly I open my eyes and I see the true colors. I see the true colors of the sea. The sea is blue, the sky is blue. The trees are green. And look, there is an eagle flying. You are living in a falsehood. You need to go to the light. You need to see the real truth. You need to go out of this electronic cave. What you see in front of you, is this real? How you will feel if you are operated by a doctor who is not really a doctor? How you will feel if you were taught by a professor that this is not really a professor? And how you will feel if you fly with a pilot which is not really a pilot? Knowledge is power that can help the people to live a better world. But how we can get knowledge? Knowledge is formulated out of data, emotions, and feelings. And all of this is the base of our decisions and lead us to the wisdom. How you will feel, imagine if you have true, immutable, validated, information and transparent. Are you going to make the same decisions? No, because now you will have the power. Did you know? In 2018, the US Department of Health and Human Services announced the largest healthcare fraud involving 600 people. Among them, 165 uh, doctors and medical professionals for false in billing, but also for falling diagnosis of more than 3,000 patients. In 2013, according to BBC, there were 3,000 certificates sold to UK buyers, and it, they were included MSCs and PhDs there. In 2020, Pakistan International Airlines granted 150 pilots over the claims that they may not hold a valid license. Every day, records are stolen or lost in this page. Every day, 6 million. Every hour, around 258,000. And every minute, around 4,000. Because my background is risk management, as you heard, from a young age, I learned to develop a mindset to always exploit opportunities and manage threats. I always remember myself having this if-then statement in my mind. If this happened, what? So if you ask me today, what is the best tool of storing, managing data in a chronological order, immutable, secure, validated, and which is the best tool of fighting the risk of fraud, mismanage of information, but also exploit opportunities of collaborating with people? It's called blockchain. So when I used to work in Rolls-Royce, I used to lead a project for low probability and high impact risks for the global supply chain, uh, such as the pandemic, yeah? So this 
this uh, project made me to realize and understand how important it is for an organization to be prepared and be proactive than be reactive. So this project gave me the opportunity to understand the importance of a visibility of immutable information in case of a crisis. Believe me, it's very crucial. Japan earthquake, it gave me the opportunity to see how important it is to be prepared. Trust your colleagues, suppliers, and be in an ecosystem that can work as a part of the whole. In other words, as we Greeks say it, the olo. So uh, COVID made us to rethink the way that we operate, communicate, collaborate. And this situation pushed us more where? To our electronic cave. Did you feel that? So isn't it time to get out? Isn't it time to rethink how we use technologies for improving what? Our happiness. The happiness of the whole, of the all. So blockchain is bringing us one step further where? To the all. So what is blockchain? So blockchain is an append database. As, my, as Prof. Marino Sermisoclerus just described it yesterday. But for me, it's a magic book. So a type of a distributed ledger which involves independent parties, the nodes, is a technology which its architecture is based on a network, on an internet infrastructure that we allows all the parties to be involved to communicate and exchange validated informations. So the power is distributed to the nodes. So the power is distributed to the all, to the whole. So each node holds the exact copy of the ledger in time. So it's impossible, uh, it is impossible to remove it from the database. And a hashing function is really, really important that, on that. But there is nothing more like a timestamp. You know, have you, do you know, when I was in England, I used to ask my mother, okay, I need to save this document in time. And she said, okay, just go to the post office. Seal it, send it with the National Post Office, just make a picture next to a, to a newspaper, and it is time stamp as well. So, this is the timestamp function for verifying authenticity of the document. And actually, this is invented back on the 90s by Harper and Stornetta, so it's nothing new. So, remember, blockchain is a chain of blocks. Each block too leads to another. So each block incorporates the hashing function to, of the previous one. And we can trace back to the first block, which is called the genesis. Again, I know I'm Greek which is called, it's the work, the Greek work, which is symbolized the birth. So documents can be hashed and stored in the blockchain, like this. So in general, blockchain is a peer-to-peer -peer system that makes the use of the proof of work in general. I know there is other uh, types. When a new transaction is initiated, is communicated to all the nodes, participants in the network, each node collects the data, and solve the proof of work. The first one that is going to solve the proof of work, uh, it's, a, it's communicated to the rest of the nodes, and the rest of the nodes accepting, validating the transaction, and they work on developing the next block in the chain. So, you may heard him, Satoshi Nakamoto. He's the father of the blockchain. Just to let you know, transmission protocols and internet protocols were invented back in the 60s. So the, a decentralized way was already invented on the city 60s. So what Satoshi Nakamoto did, he worked on a cryptographic hash in a peer-to-peer -peer network for transmitting, transferring information with trust. So some, they call it the trusted layer of the internet. So is this the tool that we will bring us back the color of the eagle and the color of the, of the sky? For many, blockchain is synonymous with Bitcoin, but this is the only, its first application, 
Another application, very important, that it is now widely used, is called the smart contracts. It's self-executed, immutable contracts, uh, which do legal documents that stored in the blockchain. This way will allow untrusted parties to reach in, a, in an agreement. So the future, we're never going to say anymore, save it, but we're going to say block it. So there is different blockchain platforms around, and you need to use whatever blockchain platform is better on the situation that you are in. So what we use in the British University in Dubai? Back in 2017, we worked with the University of Nicosia, and we implement one of their solutions uh, for, our, for our academic certificates. But the um, uh, University of Nicosia is doing that from 2014. They're also accepting bitcoins by then as a form of payments. And uh, it's a simple process. Simplicity is important. It's just what you see, a document. A document that is issued by us with digital fingerprints, with, um, with a blockchain proof, and disseminated to our students in a form of a PDF uh, with metadata. If somebody wants to validate this process, you need to go back to our internet web page, upload this PDF, and then voila, the validation. But you know what? Blockchain is not only that. Blockchain is an asset that can open us the opportunity and the potential of a new model in education. So I imagine a university, the University of Holland, a university that all internal operation and administration process will run with the use of blockchain. A decentralized university that will have decentralized research that will have decentralized programs, will have decentralized academics, a worldwide university that will allow knowledge to be created and communicated and to be available to all. Because knowledge is power and it belongs to the all. The whispers of blockchain, it depending again on its simplicity, on your engagement, on the people engagement, on the government support. And we are lucky. We live in Dubai, which is embedded blockchain in their blockchain, in their strategy from 2016. We are all a part of something greater of ourselves. We are part of the whole, the all of but to live well, we need to function as a part of all on. You know, a damage to a cell can cause a damage to the whole organ. So we have a responsibility to be true, real, and keep the whole system healthy. And knowledge is our weapon. Plato taught his students that all of us want to be a part of something higher, which the world that we see is only a small part. All of us, he said, need to crawl out of the cave of the darkness and ingress and walk into the light. This is the way to happiness for an individual and a society.